Hey guys, so if you're new here or if you're not, if you want to hear me voice act, head over to our main channel, links down below. And if you don't, this channel's solely for TTS. Um, if you want to know all the details about what's going on, we have a stream up that you can go and watch, but let's just get into the video. Don't ask DM questions you don't want to know answers to. Be me, level 3 fighter with 19 AC. Be not me, DM. Other three party members be ambushed by cult. Cult outnumber you, you still do good and defeat some of the cultists. New enemy joins the battle. New enemy be Oathbreaker Paladin with 19 AC Paladin hits me. Divine smite. I go down. Lose death save. Get healed somehow manage to kill most of the cultists and overpower Paladin. Paladin escapes I ask DM wait. Was that a chaos warrior? DM now it is DM takes notes. MW. Don't ask DM questions you don't want to know answers to or you might give him ideas you might regret later. The newbie in all of us. My vet player but relatively new GM started a new campaign. Partway into the campaign, he invites a friend of his who never touched a TTRPG. We were a group of vets and welcomed him in open arms. In the first few sessions his fighter. Thoroughly investigating chandeliers because the GM described the room was lit by a chandelier. Set up rock climbing gear to cross a room that had a hole in the floor from something heavy crashing into it years ago. Goes to every door and tries to lockpick it, including unlocked doors. Pokes every box, barrel, or chest with a stick because he's heard of mimics. After one session, he asks if he's doing okay. The new guy felt like he wasted a lot of time. Cue each party member sharing odd habits from their first time playing. My first character thought he could talk down every monster. My first character stole everything, including garbage, because he thought it could be valuable. My first character refused to use a single consumable item in case he needed it later. Then we all agreed that mimics were an issue, and poking everything with a stick is a logical course of action for an adventurer. The pain of character creation. Be me. DM. Realize I need to connect with some other friends to maintain a healthy mental state. Reach out to old DND group. Think I was too harsh on judgment and need to relax. Work on multiple campaign ideas. Send multiple forms. Narrow it down to one. Begin working on it. Get day nailed down where all six players can make it. Buy snacks. Prep for character building in between schoolwork. Make a neat map. Really proud of myself. Players arrive. Everything goes okay at first. Feels a bit haphazard but that's okay. Try best, but still don't have rules memorized. Mention playable races. The downward spiral begins. 4 stroke 6 players won't let up about playing the duck person race. Continually harass me about it as I'm trying to explain the world and what I have done with world building. Players start bugging each other over petty stuff. One player wants to play something weird, figure it out and give it the okay but it takes quite a while. Players keep having me repeat things I've said 3-5 times because they won't pay attention or listen. One player keeps falling asleep, just like all the other times we played. Keeps on like this for 30 minutes, all while players are just generally being difficult to handle. Hey, how to divide skill points? Way thought it that work. PNG. Realize I forgot to mention an important aspect of skill assignment. Player gives me a frustrated look. Look in the book now, I'm not bothering until you're sure. After another 30-ish minutes of frustration, finally finish characters. Realize that running it will be hell and my players will just make me miserable. TFW you realize you weren't being overly harsh. Anon has an interesting group. Be me. DM for almost 10 years. Have a pretty good players that always play with me. Make a simple quest. Somehow they take 14 in game days to finish it. They find the demi boss. Big bad werewolf. The warrior got and steal a rotip earlier in the quest. The warrior gets close to the wolf. The warrior tries to shove the rotip into the werewolf ass. Fail. Relife. Wait. PNG. The dwarf ask for the erotip. The dwarf tries the same thing. Dices rolls. The dwarf almost got a nat 20. Dwarf entire arm is up the werewolf ass. MFW. P 
PNG they killed the werewolf by anal poisoning. I love my players. I remembered why I don't play online with randoms anymore. Be me. Join online Roll20 group because friends don't have time to play. Roll up LVL1 UA Mystic. Be not me. Level 1 vampire named Shadow. Edge Lord Supreme. And rest of party I don't remember. DM has us spawn on pirate airships surrounded by pirates. We are all escaped prisoners. Roll initiative. Edge Lord goes first. Easy starts to campaign. Band together to defeat pirates. Become party. Do adventure. Right? Wrong? Edgelord turns and swings at me because he doesn't know me. It's what mature actor Waldo. Eggs. Misses attack. I notice he is standing about 5 feet from the side of the airship. Chuckle to myself as I cast the equivalent of force push at max power. Fails the save. Begins plummeting to his death. A Megalore. Wav. Q 5 minutes of bitching before DM lets other characters flying familiar attempt to save him from the fall even though this thing was tiny. Familiar fails strength save. Vampire Regilord plummets to his doom and dies. Bitches again for another 20 minutes about the consequences of his own actions before leaving the discord call. Don't even finish session. One member wants to keep playing with the Regilord because they feel bad. Rest of party says fuck that and leaves. No session 2. Fucking edgelords. No tabletop RPG is complete without beautiful models on the table and the best place to get models is from us. If you check the link below we have everything you could need for your magical realm. Only the finest of big titty wafers here. But if you're not into models or don't play with models we got you covered with subclasses such as the Gachimashi Wizards, the Simp Warlock and the North FC Fighter. Also we have started selling 5th edition adventures with our first one featuring Belle Delphine, the succubus that has poisoned the town's well and turned the villagers into simps. If any of that stuff sounds fun to you go ahead and check the link below but let's get back to the video. The quest to find good players. Be me. Last May. 5e e fan with lots of time and creativity on his hands. Punish myself by working on a homebrew setting. Based on the concept of a story I imagined in middle school. Actually turns out to be pretty good. Now it's time to find players. Spread the word in local game stores and online. Takes less than a month to find 5 volunteers. Campaign dies after one session due to scheduling issues and childish behavior. MFW. Fight back depression and start looking for new players again. Takes a little longer but I get a group of 4. I know half of these guys now so it will work out for sure. Campaign dies after one session once again due to scheduling issues. Depression kicks in hard. I decide to just give up because this setting is clearly cursed and is not worth the stress. Eventually forget about it and move on. Just playing Adventurers League with my local community. Spooktober comes in, receive phone call. Hello Lingu Oxer, I saw your note in the game store. Are you still looking for players? Compla teleforgot about those. JPG. Uh, sure. You're alone for now and it might take a while. No prob. I'm actually planning to just ghost him because I don't think anyone else will contact me. Fast forward a couple days later, I actually get called by another player for the same reason. Yo I mean at this point we just need another player and then we have a party. I'll bring a guy. A shit a chippening. Keck. I keep my expectations low while we meet for session 0. They're all veterans looking for a game with lots of roleplay and a fair share of fighting too. They're all very invested in the world I created and the lore I tell them. They all create characters that blends very well with the atmosphere and the themes. I even managed to find a fourth guy for the party among my league colleagues. First session arrives and the quality of the game can't be compared to anything else I have ever played. They also had a blast and really want to see what happens next. MFW all of my pain was not in vain. MFW we are all gonna make it, Dean Bros. Table of 10-20 year vets walked directly up to chest telegraphed many times to be a mimic, and never even question it. Pathfinder 1e campaign. B players, 3 10-20 year vet min maxers, rogue, wizard, and fighter types, with a newbie alchemist. Be me. Forever DM. 
Start players at level 3. Run introductory dungeon for new player. Refresher for veteran since system is old now. All rooms and encounters designed to showcase basic core mechanics all found in PHP. Room 1. Basic types weaknesses. Plants. Burn it with fire. Cleared easy. Room 2. Flanking versus clear and obvious chocker points. One of which, a long haul, they had to come through to enter the room. Four level 3 PCs stand in the middle of the room like Dumbasses and almost TPK versus 6 level 1s. That's not a good start. Jif. Short lever puzzle the players somehow manage not to fuck up. Impressed. JPG. Fast forward 4 rooms of basic mechanics and gimmicks. Many hidden objects but no traps yet. Tell players to keep an eye out for traps anyway. Players finally starting to pick up the pattern, and continue to final room to confront dungeon BBEG. Final fight is a test of everything they learned. Time to chase the BBEG through dungeon. Room lit by torches and skylight. Light from skylight looks like it's filtering through a pool. Players don't look up to investigate. They don't even check the room for traps. This is the trap room. BBEG starts fight by navigating around a chest that is literally chained to the ground. Chest makes ominous noises as she brushes past it to flip a lever on the wall. Show chest chained to the ground again in background of BBEG reveal cutscene. Could not make more obvious what that is. 20 year vets stop to loot the chest. Do not even take a single precaution. All have their own mimic horror stories. Even the newbie has a mimic horror story. Rogue cannot find lock on chest. Tell players they have to unchain it before its lid will open. It fucking worked. Jif. Rogue fails disable device check to unchain the chest. Chest shifts and rumbles. Tries again anyway. Succeeds before anyone thinks it might be a mimic. Chains fly off as chest leaps in the air. Roll for initiative. Jif. Players. Shocked Pikachu face. PCs erupt in collective pants shitting at the mimic they just needlessly unchained. Not a mimic. Chest full of unstable sky metal goes on a magical journey. JPG. Chest smashes its way out the skylight and water flows in. Not water. Surprise gelatinous cube falls where the chest was. Drifting into town. The start of a long adventure. Be me. GM and recently unemployed by that gosh darned plague spreading across the land. Haven't run in person DND in around 4 years. Pandemics are a great time to start up again. Be not me, childhood best friend, all around nerd, and dangerously able to multiclass. Call them H. Also not me, partner, fellow college student, and moderately new to DND. Let's go with K. I pitched to them a basic premise to start up with. A big dry and dusty continent and a smattering of towns clustered around some elemental portals that feed them supplies. I tell my players that they'll be starting out as drifters, notice the capital D, halfway between adventurers and disposable mercenaries. Proper adventuring is out of fashion these days. I also tell them not to worry too much about backstory since A, this is a casual game, no idea how long we'll be at it. B. I don't have a lot of world yet for them to tie into. And something about DM bravado you might not live at long. K asks for a few details and learns that most of the towns are run by genesee of varying types who totally feel greater genie that command the elemental portals. So, they create an air genesee paladin. A scarred woman by the name of Breeze who glares a lot and likes dismembering their enemies. I ask if that's their given name. She says not to worry too much about the backstory. I love my partner. H sees a threat from the DM as more of a challenge and decides that what a nice tanky paladin needs is a swords bard. A one man band if you will, to fill in all the gaps caused by the lack of a party in general. A little bit of healing, tanking, skill monkeying, and plenty of talking. H introduces Michael and asks the name of the smallest backwater town on the map. Q Michael of Dust Seam. I don't ask if he's really from there, I learn quick. Q. Lots of talk for a fairly simple premise but I am wordy fellow. Opening things off properly with the first job. Breeze and Michael drift into Dark Gleam. They arrive on an air carriage. 
You know the flying trains from sunless skies, those. They get eyed out by some miners and earth genesee overseers but manage to avoid any unwanted attention. Hang around, blow some money on supplies and metal gear since Dark Gleam is one of those rare forge towns that don't need fire genesee to forge stuff. K says that's good because Breeze hates fire genesee. Little bit of elemental racism, very nice. I say it's not like they killed her family or anything. This earns me a look in the creeping feeling like I just laser guided myself a traumatic backstory. Later that day after getting refreshments, stale water imported and mediocre beer locally brewed they get looking for some drifter friendly work. Greased palms and past persuade checks lead them to Haber al Karamo, the earth genesee manager of land acquisitions. He tells them that a local wizard passed away recently and as they had no heirs their land is returning to the town and the genesee family running it. Unfortunately, this was one of those artificery wizards and the tower they built still has a bunch of constructs either unsold or for defense. He offers something to the tune of 500 GP if they'll go knock out the defenses. H gets more than a foot in the door as Michael produces a convincing forge document and spins a yarn about work for some merchants a few towns over. In the interests of a big contract for a shipment of coal in the future they bargain up 750 GP and tickets farther along their route. One quick mechanized land carriage ride a few miles out of town and they show up at the wizard's tower. It is around 6 stories high and has a large fenced in area out here amongst some dusty hills. As well as a pair of barns rough hewn from local sandstone. Right before he leaves Haber mentions that he normally has a team of local guards that do this kind of work normally, but they haven't come back out of the tower and he'd like to at least like to get the job done before telling his superiors he needs more troops. H comments on how the deception check felt too easy, I tend to demand good roleplay before I'll let dice hit the table in bargaining, and K has Breeze Glower and Mutter wishing they had known that before the agreement. Habera leaves quickly and says he'll be back in the evening to pick them up or check their progress. A few perception checks get thrown around, a stunted attempt to know a few things about this wizard. They don't and the two barns have been picked clean. The walls of the tower are smooth and the windows heavy slats on the lower levels. Breeze offers to use their air genesee racial ability to levitate her and Michael to the top and a balcony they can see. Michael, accurately. Guesses that there is probably some magic defenses up there that could knock them down. So they go in through the front door. Big stone doubles that are open just a crack, they slip into a large workshop room that takes up the first two floors of the building. Various tables with heavy equipment remain here, the little stuff already taken by the earlier group. There is a large crane and winch arrangement as well as a huge crucible, currently empty in the middle. Overhead and making up the second story section are metal catwalks as well as stairs leading up to them and another set leading up to the wood beamed second floor. No signs of conflict or survivors. Some quick searching confirms there isn't any GM pity loot on this level so they quickly make their way up. Breeze takes point with longsword and shield, packing up the heavy crossbow they use to equalize range fights. Michael watches her back with a short sword and a free casting hand. Immediately on hitting the next level they see the mess. This floor has several open concept styled areas on the floor as well as a few interior sheds that have been burnt to the ground, earth floor. Human, elf, dwarf, halfling, and an earth genesee are all strewn about with a mix of heavy wounds caused by either strong beasts or vicious weapons. Several appear to have been burned to death and all of them are a little crispy. Some minimal cautious poking around happens and Michael spots boxy air vent tunnels running around the room, with grates on the end. They both hear rattling and draw back to the stairs before there is a loud clang. The grates on either end of the room open and a pair of steel defenders emerge. Metal doggers. They immediately rush in and we start our first combat of the game. The pressure comes out early. The homunculus hounds win on initiative and also land their opening attacks. Rocking that pack tactics from their flesh and blood counterparts. By contrast Breeze and Michael don't open strong at all. Breeze goes first, misses, Michael following sweet right after. He does get some bardic inspiration over to her though and they rotate around against one of the burned walls so only one of them can get pack tactic at a time. Next round they trade hits which is better but LVL1 paladins don't smite. 
round after no one gets hit since both the constructs have a nice AC and the players are doing their best stay turtled up. I grin, or at least I wish I did. More rattling from the tunnels, but also a crackling. Soon after that what can only be described as a hand made of roiling fire jumps out of a grate and starts moving in. Quick aside, I love the living spell template provided by Baron. They scratch that itch that elementals never really provided in the base content. Something something creativity and options. It almost makes it over but Breeze can see it coming and lands a quick arcana check to guess that this thing has access to burning hands and being scrunched together is going to be a bad time. They give Michael a quick boost up the wall and start climbing up themselves, eating both opportunity attacks for he metal dogs when the hand goes off. Fire washes over both platter male pooches, finishing one and leaving the last one glowing red hot. Michael drops and finishes it off as it turns on the elemental monster while Breeze unshoulders her crossbow and drills a bowl through the somewhat reduced hand. Even more rattling from the tunnels gets a few dice thrown at my screen as both players remind me they are only level 1 at the moment. I definitely grin even as taking a d4 to the nose. Breeze drops as well, runs over and smashes the hinge of one grate blocking it off while Michael dances with the burning hand to buy time. Another appears and starts scuttling over. Players do that smart thing and start beating a retreat to the catwalks below. Seems like these things only get one shot of burning hands, they do get more, just on a recharge. Kiting back down they kill of the first hand and hold some actions for the second. Right as it emerges down the stairs Michael runs straight up, leaps over it, and kicks out the railing. Right after Breeze charges forward as well but with an outstretched shield sweeps the flaming appendage over the edge. It tumbles down about 20 feet and lands right in the crucible on the base floor. Trapped. Breeze takes no chances, unslings her crossbow again and finishes it off as it vainly tries to melt its way through a cauldron meant to hold molten steel. Before advancing further up they tamp down the fires spreading on the second floor as best they can and pull the bodies of the last team. After that a quick short rest is hid because as they tell me again. We are only level 1 for fuck's sake. Well guys hope you enjoy today's video. We are going to assume you have if you have stayed to the end. Consider subscribing and clicking the notification bell if you really enjoyed it to stay up to speed with any and all new videos. Also check out the links below to our shop for some fat ass titties and our sponsor Rural and be sure to use a promo code at checkout so they know we sent you and you'll get 10% off. And until next time.